Hi, um, my name is Bill Simpson. I'm the chair of the Brookfield Police Station Building Committee. Um, we're here today to talk about the police station that we've designed and will hopefully begin construction on April 1st of 2015. Um, I have here with me today Brian Humes of Jakunski Humes Architects. Um, he'll be going into detail about what is encompassed in the project. Um, the committee is a seven member committee, the building committee, it's um, myself, um, um, Patricia Washburn is the clerk, uh, Kermit Eaton is also on the committee, um, David Holm, uh, uh, Jason Lemieux, um, Richard LaPierre, um, Doug Brown, is, is that seven? That's seven. And then that's the committee. Um, uh, Kevin Heffernan is our the owner's project manager, someone who we've hired um, to help manage the project. He's actually doing paperwork now um, from the bid receipts that just came in, um, but he is the owner's project manager. Um, so that's basically the, the summary of what we've been doing. We've been working on the project for, for a while now. I mean, when did you come on board? In the fall. In the fall. So, and, and we started, I think, after town meeting of uh, 2014. So it's been a busy year, um, and uh, so we're going to give take some time to show you what we've got together. And I'll give it to Brian to talk about the steps we've gone through and what we've come up with. Thanks, Bill. Uh, for an introduction, I'm Brian Humes, a principal in the firm of Jakunski Humes Architects. We're located in Berlin, Connecticut. It's a small architectural firm, but what we do out of our firm is specialize in police and public safety facility design. So it's great to be in Brookfield. Uh, with our experience in this, I've been designing police facilities now for over 30 years, have over 60 facilities uh, designed or constructed throughout New England. And primarily we do work in Connecticut and Massachusetts with a lot of our work concentrated in Massachusetts. For Brookfield, we've been working on Brookfield now for a number of months. Uh, we were first brought on by the committee after an interview process and a proposal process. After that selection process was concluded, uh, we were hired to do a study. The study for this project consisted of doing a needs analysis to first determine what the needs of the facility were as far as spaces and sizes of rooms. After the needs analysis, we did analyze the site to see that the site was suitable to meet the needs of the department. Then we did an uh, estimate on cost to see if the project was, uh, appeared to be within the budgeted amounts that the town had to spend. After we reviewed the project and reported back to the building committee, then they authorized us to do construction documents and to put this project out to bid for competitive bidding. So we've done a lot of work in, in the time that we've been here. I did want to uh, show you the end result of what the study has concluded and where the building will go and what the building is anticipated to look like. At this stage of the process, the project is currently out to bid. So drawings have been developed. We are awaiting bids from contractors to determine what the final construction cost would be. Uh, but the project that is planned is on a town-owned site, and the town-owned site is to the rear of the Brookfield Town Hall. I do have a site plan, and I think I can explain on the site plan where the building would be located and some of the features of the building. To orient you to the project site, the project site is actually on Prouty Street. Prouty Street has Central Street on one end of it, and on the other end of it is Route 9 Post Road. It's a town-owned parcel that backs up to the existing Brookfield Town Hall and the existing Brookfield Fire Department. Entrance to the site would be a new curb cut off of Prouty Street at this location. The curb cut would have a new drive and the drive would be extending all the way to the back parking area of the Brookfield Town Hall. Along that drive area would be sidewalks, so pedestrians could access the police department and access the fire department or other municipal buildings being the town hall from Prouty Street. Public parking would be located just inside that curb cut with handicapped accessible parking. Another curb cut on the facility is going into 
what is called a sally port. A sally port is just a secured garage area for the police department to use. They have exclusive use to bring any detainees into the facility. Garage doors would open, the cruiser would enter the sally port structure, and garage doors would close. And then the police department would have a safe transition of that detainee from the cruiser into the building. So while we have another curb cut at Prouty Street here, this is not a public access area. This is restricted to official vehicles only. We do have parking to the rear of the facility and the parking to the rear would be restricted access for official vehicles and staff parking only. And these spaces would accommodate police staff, cruisers, and any other official vehicles of the police department. So again, we have a access from the entry road, which would be restricted access only for the use of official vehicles. The building itself would be in this location on the site. The front door and the, the front entrance of the site would be oriented toward Prouty Street. The overall square footage of the building, which is being planned, is 4,000 square feet. That does not include the Sally Port additions and the Sally Port construction, and I'll go into that in a little more detail a little bit later. But the main building is approximately 4,000 square feet. It will be designed, it's designed and constructed as a slab on grade structure, one story in height, with a pitched roof and architectural shingles. That's the orientation of the site. There was an existing building on this site. If you're familiar with this Prouty Street site, there was a house, a residence on this site. That house has been removed from the site. And that area of the site is now an area that we're going to utilize for septic systems and septic design. Other utilities that we have on the street, on the street we do have water service on the street, which is being brought into the building. We have electrical service on the street being brought into the building, and we also have natural gas on this site brought, being brought into the building. We're connecting to existing stormwater systems that are in the street, so all stormwater and drainage would be tied into existing drainage, which is along Prouty Street, and then crosses over Route 9. Before you put that up there, I just want to point out that one of the unique things about this project is, and I'd like to give a thank you to the highway department in Brookfield because they're doing um, the bulk of the site work surrounding the building. So most of the work on this page outside of the footprint of the building is going to be completed by the, um, the Brookfield Highway Department. They've really stepped up and um, will be saving the town a tremendous amount of money um, by doing the work um, in-house. Um, and uh, so the parking, the paving, Basically everything outside of 10 feet of the building is gonna be done by our town facilities. And um, so I don't wanna not mention that that work will be done by them. And that's helping us keep this project under budget and um, more affordable for the folks at Brookfield. So, go ahead. It looks all right. <laughs> I think so. We've created this photo rendition of the proposed facility. Uh, I say photo rendition because this is an actual photograph that we took at Prouty Street. You can see behind the building is the Brookfield Town Hall and so this is the existing uh, tree line, existing landscaping, and uh, no snow coverage on this, <laughs> side, on this photograph. So we're looking at green grass. The, the site at Prouty Street, if you're looking at it, you might consider this site to be flat. Uh, while it is in appearance flat, it does have a slight topography from a high spot at this side down to a low spot as Prouty Street does drop in elevation as you go from Central Street down to Route 9. There is a slight slope to this site. We are looking to bring the site to a constant elevation for the building. So everything within the building from the front door to the Sally Port entrances, everything would be at a level grade. We have a level grade from the handicapped parking area. This would be pedestrian access to the building and access to the main entrance. We'd have a covered entrance at that location. And everything, as you can see, has no steps, no, no uh, ramps. It's a smooth transition from a parking area to a sidewalk 
to a front door. And the rest of the facility is completely handicapped accessible and meets all the accessibility requirements for uh, handicapped accessibility. When we're looking at the overall architecture of the building, we realize that this building is in a residential area. While we do have a town hall and municipal buildings, we wanted to make the character of this building fit with the residential style of, of the uh, neighboring uh, facilities and neighboring buildings that we have on Prouty Street. That's why it was elected to go with clapboard siding. It's a one-story building. The clapboard siding on this building would be a vinyl sided uh, construction. All of the trim boards and all of the trims around the window, all of the detailing around the eaves is of cellular PVC, which is a maintenance free product. So the outside of this building was not only looked at from a really residential character, but also for maintenance, trying to reduce the overall maintenance on the project and overall life cycle costs of maintenance. So by putting in the vinyl siding, the cellular PVC, the uh, cast plastic that we have on the exterior of the building, these products, while they will have some paint on the, on the trims, would be very low maintenance for the, for the facility. Uh, this building should be relatively maintenance free on the exterior. We have introduced a gable on the front of the building. In that gable, we've incorporated a seal within the gable. We want to signify this building as a municipal building. So we've incorporated a seal of the town of Brookfield within the gable to give it some architectural element on the front of the building. And these windows, the style of the windows, uh, and the placement of those windows goes into the meeting room, which is being planned for the facility. The other thing that we're doing on the facility is actually identifying the building, Brookfield Police Department. The lettering on this building would be an advantage to anybody who's familiar with the town, but also people who are not familiar with the town. Being adjacent to Route 9, we have to make sure that this building is identifiable. This building serves a community function and a safety uh, function. So anybody that's traveling through Brookfield and needs to identify as to find out where the police department is, it's identified on the building. It's also very visible from Route 9. The concept of the building is to be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So anybody needing assistance, anybody wanting to find police services would be able to come to the front door and find assistance, whether you're a resident, whether you're traveling through town, or whether you're just a visitor. The design that you see to the right of the elevation, we're showing two garage doors those would actually serve as two Sallyport bays. What we've done with the uh, bid of the project is we're bidding out for the contractors to price out one bay on the Sallyport. We've asked for contractors to give us an alternate price on what would it be to build two Sallyport bays. When we receive bids, the building committee would then have an opportunity to assess the, the value of that second Sallyport Bay and determine if that's in the best interest of the town moving forward. Uh, the need of the police department would be for a minimum of one bay. What the second bay would do is give them an opportunity to process vehicles, hold vehicles as evidence, and detain vehicles inside so they could process those um, vehicles. Maybe it's not a vehicle, but maybe it's something else that's large that needs to be processed and trying to do that outside in the elements could compromise evidence. So in this instance, having a second bay to process uh, evidence or to process materials while still having the original Sally Port Bay to use as a Sally Port is a def definite advantage to the department. Costs and bids will determine whether uh, the town is going to elect to, to construct with one bay or two. Some other features of the, of the elevation, as I mentioned earlier, architectural shingles. It's a very residential style. The hip roof is something that reduces the overall mass of the building. We're looking to also identify the project at the street with a road sign. 
We also have a flagpole, which is indicated as a municipal symbol on the front of the police department for, for a flying of a flag. As Bill mentioned earlier, a lot of the site work that's being done here is being done under the authority and control of the Department of Public Works. The road sign is a look to relocate the existing road sign that occurs at the police department now. The flagpole, while it's shown in the rendering, the building committee is looking for uh, funds that are available for a flagpole, if funds are available, or if donations are possible, they'll definitely take donations for a flagpole. Well, and it looks like at this point we actually do have a donation of a flag and um, the campground that the town is now ownership of um, has a flagpole on that property that we may be reusing on this site. So, so that's looking good at this point. So it really has been an effort to try to look at all aspects of the facility, trying to look at all costs associated with this facility, and trying to bring this project in at and below the allocated funds. All right, what else is there to say? I think Brian's been doing a very thorough job and the committee has been reviewing his work as we go forward. Um, I'd like to thank Brookfield Cable Access for having us on today, uh, giving us an opportunity to share this. We um, presented before the planning board a couple weeks ago and unfortunately the cable access wasn't able to be there so they invited us to come in today and we certainly appreciate that. Um, and uh, thank you to all the other boards in town who have been helping out. Um, the, we've already been presenting plans to the building inspector and the fire chief and, and we've been working with all with uh, various groups throughout town to help bring this project together and bring as many people into it as we can. So thank you very much and we uh, hope you enjoy the project. If there's any questions about the project, feel free to contact the building committee through the selectman's office and uh, we'll be glad to help you out. Thank you. Thank you. One more interesting aspect of this project is we're going out to bid in, in two fashions. We're bidding the project under standard construction methods, which is the um, contractors come to the site, they build this building from the ground up, and uh, we end up with a police station. The other avenue that we're pursuing is um, modular construction, and uh, we'll be getting bids from modular companies that build the building off-site, or most of it off-site, bring it in on trucks, and then build it up from there. You end up with the same building either way, but um, it's going to come down to what they can offer in terms of time and cost, and we'll know all of that when the bids come in. Um, either way, we're going to get a beautiful building here, thanks to Brian and the team, and um, that's it for Modular.